tonight. Delhi Cup Diplomacy. Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince is in India to reinforce strong India UAE bilateral relations and meets Prime Minister Modi at his New Delhi residence. Palestine Yajin. Asia's most powerful storm this year leaves dozens dead in northern Vietnam amid widespread damage as it churned westward. Bring them back. Tens of thousands of people fill the streets of Tel Aviv, demanding a deal to free Israeli hostages in Gaza. And curtain call. The flames of the 2024 Paralympic Games are doused after nearly two weeks of competition and sportsmanship, with the world looking forward to Los Angeles next. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Derna, World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We have a lot of key stories to bring you from around the world and let's begin this week with the latest updates from India. Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed Al Nayan met the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at New Delhi's Hyderabad house today as a part of his two-day official visit to India. The Crown Prince, who is on his first official visit to the country, also attended a rattling ceremony at the Mahatma Gandhi's Rajgarh Memorial in New Delhi later in the day. The Indian Foreign Minister said Al Nayan is also scheduled to visit India's financial hub Mumbai to participate in a business forum. Indian and Emirati officials are expected to review their trade agreements this week amid concerns raised by Indian industry over a sharp increase in imports of precious metals from the United Arab Emirates. The two countries are among each other's top trading partners with a bilateral trade of about 85 billion US dollars in 2022 to 2023. The UAE is also among the top four investors in India in terms of foreign direct investments in the same year. About 3.5 million strong and vibrant Indian community forms the largest expatriate group in the UAE. Super Typhoon Yagi, Asia's most powerful storm this year, left dozens dead in the northern Vietnam and widespread damage as it churned westwards while the weather agency warned of more floods and landslides. As the Vietnam's Disaster Management Agency states, 35 people have died and 24 are missing, mostly because of the landslides and floods triggered by the typhoon. Typhoon Yagi left dozens dead in northern Vietnam as it barreled westwards, preliminary government estimates showed on Monday. The country's infrastructure has also been hit by Asia's most powerful storm of this year, as the weather agency warned of more floods and landslides. Widespread damage could be seen in the Vietnamese capital Hanoi on Monday, with downed trees covering the streets and signs ripped from their hoardings. The typhoon swept across Vietnam's northeastern coast on Saturday, cutting power to millions, flooding highways and disrupting telecommunications networks. This usually busy bridge in Phu To province was swept away. Authorities said initial investigations suggested there were eight vehicles on the bridge when it collapsed. Despite being downgraded to a tropical depression on Sunday, Yagi has brought a halt to economic activity in many industrial hubs. Managers and workers at industrial parks and factories in Haiphong, a coastal city of two million, said on Monday that power was out and equipment was being salvaged from the rain. These pictures show an LG electronics factory, the walls of which collapsed following the typhoon's impact. Updating you on the holy visit now. Pope Francis arrived in East Timor, the world's most Catholic nation outside Vatican City, for a three-day visit. The Vatican says that this visit will be marked with an open-air celebration of Mass that may include more than half country's population. The 87-year-old pontiff is on a 12-day visit to four countries across Southeast Asia and Oceania, despite his fragile health conditions. The visit is his longest overseas journey so far. 
Pope Francis arrived to a sea of enthusiastic crowds after spending several days in Papua New Guinea. The streets were electric with excitement as the pontiff's motorcade made its way through the trunks of cheering onlookers. The last papal visit to Dili was in 1989 when Pope John Paul II arrived in territory then occupied by Indonesia, giving East Timor's fledgling independence movement an historic boost and rare prominence on the global stage. East Timor, which gained independence in 2002, has allocated $12 million for the Pope's visit, part of a marathon 12-day trip which began in Indonesia and will end in Singapore. Edmundo Gonzalez Urrutia, who insists he is Venezuela's legitimate president-elect, fled for exile in Spain and vowed to continue the fight for freedom and democracy. Gonzalez Urrutia arrived in Madrid after weeks in hiding in the crisis torn South American country. The opposition says it can prove he won the 28th of July elections in which Maduro claimed a victory that has been widely disputed. Running for president against Venezuela's leader Nicolas Maduro was a difficult task from the start. Weeks after the opposition declared he won the July election, Edmundo González has had to flee the country. Spain confirms it will grant him asylum. González had found refuge in the Spanish embassy in Caracas after a Venezuelan attorney general sought his arrest. Venezuela's authorities say Nicolas Maduro won the vote, not González, and that the opposition is spreading fake news. UN experts observing the election say that results brought by Caracas lack credibility. Meanwhile, commenting on González' departure, Venezuela's vice president says Caracas respected international law. And let's go in for a short commercial break now. More world news right after this. On the road to the White House now. Donald Trump held a rally in Monsigny, Wisconsin as he tries to solidify support for his presidential campaign among a key part of his base, working class and rural whites. For Harris, it's a marquee movement to show Americans that she is ready to assume the presidency, a question very much on the minds of voters as the fall campaign intensifies. The debate at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia will be the first face-to-face -face encounter between Harris and Trump, who are locked in a tight race. Trump won Wisconsin, a key swing state, against Hillary Clinton in 2016, but lost it to President Joe Biden in 2020. But he carried Marathon County, where Mosini is located, convincingly in both elections. Maintaining Trump's margins within that demographic is crucial, his advisors say, in order for him to win in November against his Democratic rival, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is leading Trump among Hispanic and black voters. <laughs> Harris, meanwhile, was in Pittsburgh on Saturday, where she welcomed recent endorsements not only from former Republican Representative Liz Cheney, but also from her father, Dick Cheney, who was vice president under Republican President George W. Bush. Harris and Trump will debate each other for the first time in Pittsburgh, with Pennsylvania another key battleground state. Over in California now, more than 10,000 people are under mandatory evacuation orders due to a fast-spreading uncontrolled wildfire in Southern California. The so-called line fire grew to over 17,000 acres as multiple departments tried to bring the fire under control. The wildfire, which started last week, spread rapidly overnight, causing California Governor Gavin Newsom to declare a state of emergency. This morning, an explosive California wildfire forcing hundreds of evacuations and creating its own weather system. Oh my God. Making it even harder to fight. Watch as the fire jumps over a major highway, the 330 in San Bernardino County. The line fire growing to over 17,000 acres in just a few hours and 0% contained. 
This woman packing her belongings into the back of her truck and this video showing slow traffic backed up for miles. More than 8,000 structures threatened, three firefighters injured. The fire creating clouds similar to ones in thunderstorms with reports of more than 3,000 lightning strikes in the area. All of this coming as much of Southern California faces triple digit temperatures with many places over 20 degrees hotter than usual for this time of year. Multiple departments all trying to bring the fire under control. Tens of thousands of people filled the streets of Tel Aviv, demanding a deal to free Israeli hostages in the Gaza as the family of an American woman killed in the West Bank demands an investigation. The protesters have been calling on the government to agree to a ceasefire deal to free dozens of captives in Gaza. The recovery of six captive bodies last week has reignited the anger against Netanyahu, who has insisted on a military solution to the issue. Overnight, a sea of people flooding the streets in Tel Aviv. Demonstrators demanding the Israeli government accept a ceasefire and hostage release deal to secure the return of more than 100 hostages still in captivity in Gaza. The scenes, evidence of the mounting pressure on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to accept a deal, but strong differences remain. The U.S., Qatar and Egypt working to facilitate a deal, but this morning a breakthrough still seems elusive, nearly a year into the war. This all comes as the Israeli army withdrew its heavy armor from cities in the occupied West Bank after the largest incursion in two decades, leaving at least 40 dead. We went to the West Bank town of Tulkarem and saw heavily damaged roads, homes and businesses. And just days ago, American Turkish activist Ashenur Egi was shot and killed by the IDF while she, peace activists and locals protested the expansion of settlements. The IDF claiming their forces were under threat, saying they fired, quote, toward an instigator of violent activity who had been throwing rocks at their forces. Despite the IDF claims, Jonathan Pollack said there was no reason for Aggie's death, claiming that the University of Washington graduate was targeted. Now the updates on the latest in the conflict in Ukraine. Russia said that its forces had seized control of one more settlement in Donetsk in the past 24 hours, while Ukraine reported on the same day the situation in Pokrov's front line is still grim. In the direction of Kursk, Russian forces thwarted five attacks by Ukrainian commanders targeting several settlements. Meanwhile, the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported of 95 battles in the front lines, with the most intense fighting in Karakov and Pokrovsk directions. The situation in the Pokrovsk direction is still grim, and the commander of the Ukrainian armed forces has been taking all necessary measures to repel the Russian offensive and stabilize the situation. The governor of Russia's southern Belgium Belgorod region said that Ukrainian forces launched drone attacks targeting a full depot in Voloknowski district, triggering fires. And finally tonight, the 2024 Paris Paralympics ended its 12-day journey with a grand closing ceremony yesterday evening. And four years from now, the drama and inspiration will continue in Los Angeles. The Olympics flame that has lit the French capital of Paris for 12 days is now extinguished, marking the end of the 2024 Paris Paralympic Games. The event, filled with inspiration, drama and celebration, came to an end with the closing ceremony taking place at Stade de France in Saint-Denis on Sunday. Including a refugee team, a total of 4,567 para-athletes from 169 National Paralympic Committee member countries competed, with 549 gold medals up for grabs in 22 events. China finished with the most gold medals with 94, followed by the UK at 49 and the United States at 36. With the curtain now drawing on Paris, para-athletes around the world will continue their pursuit of going up against all odds and bringing more inspiration and joy to the Paralympics in Los Angeles four years from now. Well, that is all we have for you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Well, stay tuned as Nadi Balasurya will join you next with the Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.